Hi guys, my name is Peng and welcome back to my channel. If you want to start your own tissue culture lab but don't have the money to buy an autoclave, this video is definitely for you. This video I will be teaching you how you can prepare your own media without having to use an autoclave and will definitely not break your bank. But this method does definitely has some drawbacks so stick till the end to see if this method is good for you. Step 1. Maintaining cleanliness. Cleanliness is the key to preventing contamination in tissue culture. The first step is washing your hands thoroughly. I use Dettol hand soap because it contains chloroxylenol, an antibacterial and antifungal agent that helps eliminate harmful microbes. However, any antibacterial soap will work. Just make sure to wash your hands properly. After washing, pat dry your hands with tissue paper to minimize lint and dust. Next, I put on a pair of medical rubber gloves, which you can find at any pharmaceutical store. Gloves act as a protective barrier, reducing the risk of contamination. Step 2. Preparing the equipment. Here are the tools and material I'll be using. 1. The magnetic stirrer. Helps mix the solution evenly. If you don't have one, you can stir manually. 2. Distilled water or RO water. If distilled water isn't available, RO water is a good enough alternative. Avoid using tap water. 3. New plastic containers with tight lids. Avoid using old jars as they may introduce contaminants. 4. Thermometer for monitoring the solution's temperature. 5. A digital scale and a weighing cup. A cheap digital scale with the precision of 0.1 gram will work. A pH meter or a pH strips. 7. MS Media. I will be using Phytotech M5800 formula, which has given me great success in multiplying houseplants. I will attach the link down below in the description box. 8. Plant Hormones. This is optional. These regulate plants' growth, but I won't be using them in this video. 9. Agar or gelling agents. Required to solidify the media. Use whatever brand you have. 10. PPM or Plant Preservatives Mixture by Plant Cell Technology. My bottle is probably very different from what is currently selling on the website because I've had it for a very long time. This is one of the most important ingredient. Without this, preparing a media without an autoclave will be impossible. Therefore, this is the secret sauce. And lastly, sugar. Any household white sugar will work. So now done with the ingredients, let's prepare our media. Using a digital scale, I weigh 4.41 gram of MS media as specified on the bottle. I then add it to the prepared distilled water, stirring gently. Do not heat the solution before adding the gelling agents because it can cause clumping. Next, I weigh 30 grams of sugar, then slowly add the sugar in as you keep stirring since it's going to be hard dissolving the sugar without heat. Next, I weigh the agar. I slowly add my gelling agents of choice. Different gelling agents require different amount, so check the label or consult your supplier. Sprinkle it in gradually while stirring to avoid lumps. And be sure not to apply heat before adding in the agar. Then mix thoroughly until fully dissolved. As you can see, the solution has increased but hasn't reached 1 liter yet. Therefore, I will be adding in more water. Next, adjusting your pH. Measure the pH level using pH meter or your pH test strips. The ideal pH range is between 5.5 to 6.0. If needed, use your pH up or pH down to adjust it. Last step, heating and finalizing the media. Before I stir, I wipe my tools with 70% alcohol for sterilization. I then bring the solution to a boil, stirring occasionally. This ensures that the gelling agent fully dissolves. Next, turn the heat off. I then monitor the temperature with the thermometer and wait for it to drop below 60 degrees Celsius before adding in the PPM. Adding PPM to a hot media can degrade it and reduce its effectiveness. Therefore, add when the temperature hits below 60 degrees but don't leave it for too long since the media will start to solidify. You can purchase your PPM from Plant Cell Technology. I'll include the link in the description. Now, I will add between 0.3 to 0.5 milliliters of PPM to the prepared media. Last stage, pouring the media into containers. 1. Wipe down your workbench with 70% alcohol. 2. Prepare your plastic containers. 3. Pour the media carefully into containers. Don't pour too much, this would be a waste, and don't pour too little. You need enough depth to place your plant tissue, about 1 cm from the bottom is ideal. 4. Avoid spilling media onto the rim of the container. If you do, wipe it off with tissue paper soaked in 70% alcohol. 
Any media trapped between the lid and the rim could lead to airborne contaminations. 5. Secure the lid tightly and leave the containers to cool. Do not shake or tilt the containers. Let them sit undisturbed. After a while, the agar will set and just like that, you have a tissue culture media ready to use without needing an autoclave steam pot or a microwave. So now that we're done with preparing the media, let's discuss about some advantages and disadvantages of this process. There are some advantages that you might not think of before and I knew it because it's what I experienced firsthand and I have never heard anyone talk about it before. And the first advantage is obvious is that it's like very simple and it requires very minimal amount of effort and time. You don't need to use a stove and microwave or any other fancy tools. So it's very beginner friendly as well. And the second advantage is it doesn't require lab equipment. What I mean by that is you can use any household equipment other than the salts that you might have to buy online. Other than that, it's just like basic stuff that you have in your house. And the third advantage is the one you might not think about before. It might sound crazy, but because when you autoclave or use other heat induced source, the nutrients in, in the MS media might be degraded. And so what I found after using this method for my first few years of like actually starting a lab because I didn't have the money to buy an autoclave is that the plants grow a lot faster than the plants subcultured in the same day in the media that has been autoclaved. And I want to show you, so wait a second. So these two plants are the same plants here. It's an orange princess. And here, I don't know if you can see it, but here, look at the density from like the side view. As you can see, this was actually subcultured on the 8th of uh, March. And this is on the 22nd of March, March. And as you can see, the plants responded to this a lot better than the one that has been autoclaved. So this is actually some major benefit I have found from using this method specifically. And this was actually in fact the media I prepared at the very beginning of this video because this video is around, I mean myself filming now and the media preparation is like around a month apart. So yeah, this is actually crazy. It was like a lot smaller, I'm not sure if I can find some pictures of the before and after but yeah that's like one major advantage that you can actually use this as a leverage to uh, increase the growth rate in your lab but let's talk about some disadvantages before you actually decide whether you want to use this pro uh, method or not now let's talk about the disadvantages the clear disadvantages from this method is that you are going to have to expect higher rate of contaminations in your lab and it's obvious as you know like if you're not really sterilizing all your tools and all your jars you're gonna get contaminations from the unseen bacterial contaminations or like um, fungus contaminations in your agar your media because we're using ppm ppm is actually stopping the growth of those of those bacteria so you're not gonna see it right away but after a few subculturing you can see signs of contaminations later on quite obvious second disadvantage to this method is that your shelf life of the media is going to be shorter what i mean by that is if you actually subculture this and put this in a jar you can actually keep it for years until like the plant grows bigger than a jar or even like you know it can survive like for a very long time let me show you some example okay i'm back this is the orange princess it's actually one of the nastier clones i mean not it's not really nice so that's why i decided to not subculture it and been neglecting the subculturing process but i kept it in a jar just to see how long it can grow i think it kept it like for a lot of months as you can see it's like very packed and there are actually some variegations in 
this jar and actually if I, I can subculture it today if I want to with no zero problem of contaminations because I don't see signs of contaminations here but let's say if I was to leave this in a jar for maybe 20 days there might be some sign of contaminations or maybe after a month like I don't know how long the PPM can hold the bacterial contaminations inside of this jar so it's very ideal for you to constantly transplant your your plants into new jars like what I typically do is that I would transplant every 15 days or like two weeks and I cannot keep it for longer than that because I will risk myself of more contaminations the third disadvantage is you are going to get inconsistent results and what I mean by that is you cannot really predict whether or not your plant is going to be clean if you if that makes sense the plants are going to be contaminated and you cannot really be sure that after another subculture the contamination is not going to show and if the contamination shows that jar is just no good like what you can do is just like you know throw it away or acclimate it and that is not really ideal for a lab and fourth disadvantage is that this is not ideal for a professional lab and I mean it, it probably sounds obvious why because as a professional lab you have to keep everything quite organized and clean otherwise you're gonna have to be dealing with a lot of contaminations in your lab and it might lead to contaminating the whole area the work area and you might bring contaminations into another species of plants and you're gonna have a lot of contaminations issue so this method was a method I've been using for like two years I mean a year and a half from the beginning of my career because I didn't have this room and I was actually working in the basement not really basement of my house but basement and I had like six cat in the house and the cat really hated my space and it always poo and pisses and you know uh, this kind of stuff on my place so I was always constantly dealing with contaminations in my lab what I did was I I couldn't sell plants out of my lab you know as clean culture so what I did was just acclimate it and then put it in my greenhouse and then sell it as soon as it grows so I mean this is not the most ideal method but if you really don't have other choices this can also be done and it has been working for me to say the least for some other disadvantages I think there are much more other disadvantages for a person who actually wants to try this method weigh it out for yourself whether or not this method is for you so that's it for this video and if there's any other topics you want me to talk about please leave it down in the comment or if you like this video please comment like subscribe do whatever you want and Subscribe just to not miss the next videos. I'll be posting as soon as I'm available. So bye